Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lucas Alexander in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the 1st of July 2021 and our special guest today is an Australian truth speaker and international lecturer on mythology, ancient texts, words, numbers, the secret long-term history of global control, flat earth theory and astro theology. He is the founder and creator of Syncretism Society and the Universal Truth School website. Santos Bonacci. Good evening from Copenhagen and good midday to our very special guest joining us from Cancun, Mexico, Santos Bonacci. We are so thrilled to welcome you on Age of Truth TV. Thank you so much for being with us. Pleasure is all mine, brother, and thank you. Thank you for inviting me to your uh, excellent platform. I've seen a lot of your interviews and um, I respect your style. You're very, um, you hit the right questions and you wait for an answer, which is what I respect. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so happy to hear that. And it's wonderful to finally have you on our show. It's been a long time and there's been a lot of our viewers who've requested to have you on and, and you have so many amazing topics to talk about. You've been a researcher and a lecturer for years and you've become quite a strong voice in the truth community for many people. You've been lecturing on ancient texts, mythology, words, numbers, religions, syncretism, the secret long-term history of global control, flat earth theory and astro theology. There's so much to cover and I know that we won't be able to get into all of those topics on the show today. So let's consider this Santos Bonacci interview part one and then we'll do part two in the coming days. But first of all, for those people who may not be too familiar with your work already, please tell us a little bit about your background and your history and how you got started and woke up to a very different understanding of life and our universal connection. <laughs> I know, it's just... Um... For me, it's pretty incredible. For me, it's very, very, very satisfying that I have syncretism. The, if I died tomorrow, I would be a very, very, very happy man. It's the greatest gift that the gods could have um, granted me and I don't feel deserving at all. But, you know, I always say, um, if, a, if a little donkey comes to your door with two sacks of gold on its back. Um, just because it's a donkey, you're not going to shoo the donkey away. You're going to accept that gold from the donkey. And that's how I feel. I feel like I'm just another one of these, um, well, I don't want to use the word donkey directly, but in a figurative sense, metaphorically, uh, we, as much as we may know, the wise man knows that he knows nothing at all. So we've got a lot to learn and a lot of things are coming to the fore which I never would have dreamt of. For instance, Tartaria, that's, that's one of my favourite su sub subjects right now, and the mud floods and how, how easy it is to do a reset and for me, the Flat Earth and uh, Tartaria and Mud Floods, they were the culminating final bits to my 40 years of research. Now, when I say 40 years, I started in 81 in earnest to study deep mythological things. Uh, Alexander Hislop, 
uh, Emmanuel Velikovsky, Isaac Asimov. These are the guys I used to adore and um, respect and read. But my journey began earlier as a Jehovah's Witness. When I was a little boy, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. So we used to go to the meetings regularly every week, as you have to, being a Jehovah's Witness, and I would learn about God so and the Bible. And so in my teenage years, of course, from 13 to 19, I just I left the church and I did the usual worldly things and by the time I hit 19, I was dissatisfied with that lifestyle, you know, um, fast cars, girls, going out with your mates, and all of that was emptiness. It was all empty for me. So I decided I would turn back to serving God. <laughs> I, I felt an urge to um, worship the, um, the creator, nature, to... Um, understand the truth i felt it my obligation i just felt that i had a role and that i had um a purpose a calling in that area but can i just jump in here because you were a jehovah's witnesses a witness and you were brought up as one but how could you actually turn away from it isn't that almost impossible when you are born and bred into this this is almost like mind control in a way right and then you turn back to it i mean how could you even say at 13 i won't be a part of it anymore and then go back into the cult or whatever you want to call it at 19. yeah it's funny i, I don't know you see i don't understand the mechanics the celestial mechanics of all of that why did i have to do 20 years at least of the fix what i call the fictional um path where you know you go to church you appear to be someone in the public image that you've created you sort of create a christian um persona around you like you're a good individual and and even though i was sincere i mean i'm like I love the, the Bible and I sincerely wanted to love humanity and save humanity. I still do. Uh, even though I was sincere, it still had very many insincere features about it. You know, um, most of the stuff you do in all of these corporate churches is all for show. It's, it's to show outwardly how good you are and, and how, how much of a Christian and how devoted you are and, so I don't know why someone like me had to go through that path when millions of others avoid churches and by instinct they know to do so. Why I, you know, had to do that, um, I suppose I needed to experience the false um, salvation as plato called it the false baptism the false spirituality it's just a level it's a level that they let you reach and which you cannot raise higher and they keep you um you know with various different um mechanisms like guilt and shame and we have the truth and we are the only ones who serve jehovah um, it's very judgmental, isn't it? And also, it, it, well, well, it is part of a mind control program in a way, isn't it? It's a mind control program and it's run by the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. It's a Jewish cabal business, the Jehovah's Witness. Um, they have a very strong cabal. It's pretty much as strong as the Vatican's really. Um, Are we, ta we are talking about Zionist Jew Jews, huh? Bolshevik, really, communist, the socialists, the ones who are behind uh, COVID and everything like that. That comes more from the Jewish cabal, but the Vatican, they need the permission of the Vatican. They can't do anything without the Pope's permission. No one can. No, no cabal, no hammer. 
no matter how big it is, no matter how powerful it is, they all have to bow down to the Pope. But then, but then the Pope bows down to the corporate owners of the church. You will never see the Pope without these family members in the background. Uh, Pallavicini, Orsini, Farnese, Borgia, Borghese, Aldo Brandini, uh, Conti, Chigi. Um, I, I can go on. I've done lots of presentations on these families, but the Pallavicini family, for instance, um, if you punch in Google uh, Islam and then Pallavicini family, you will see who is running Islam. It's a Roman Empire, Italian, Persian family called Pallavicini. And when you break that word down, it means those who are close to Allah. Pa Allah means near Allah. And Vicini is the word in English, vicinity. Vic vicinity, vicinity. So Palla Vicini means they are the ones who are close to Allah. Guarantee you 100%, brother, they run everything, everything to do with Islam. And those families are also the ones that are the original Illuminati, right? Or part of that, part of that, those bloodlines connecting to all of the bloodlines around the world, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Collins, Astor family, and all of those that, that we know of. Yep. And their names are not their real names. Those are corporate names. So, uh, for instance, Tom Cruise, he is an Orsini. Uh, Queen Elizabeth, she is an Orsini. But when you look at her lineage, you will see Saxa, Coburg, Gotha, uh, many other names. Well, those are corporations which come under the maximum family, which is the Orsini family. They are the maxima, which means uh, they hold most of the power. Without their, their veto, without their vote or... Um, approval nothing happens would you would you claim that the orsini family family are more powerful than the rothschilds and the rockefellers well this is it the, the rothschilds are orsini they are orsini and you can tell that by the name red shield orsini means little bear but it also means little red bear the red people so See, Rome, the soldiers wore red helmets. They had red uh, armour. They had red shields, right? So since 1827, when um, Maya Amschel Rothschild did a deal with uh, Carlos... Uh, I forget the name of the... Of the uh, the ruler there in Naples, uh, they got in the back door, they got to, they got to get the gig to uh, run the treasury of the Vatican through these um, families. I think that family there was Colonna, the Columbus family. Collins, Cohen in Jewish, Colonna, anything, anything with Collins. <laughs> uh, that's um, that goes back to the Columbus Corporation again. It's just a corporation. Yeah, but didn't the Rothschilds change their name from Bauer originally? Yeah, that's true. Bauer is another corporate name. Remember, they make all your surname is a corporate name. My name Bonacci. It's it's not mine. That is a corporate name which is copyrighted by the Vatican. Did you actually take that name uh, as a reference to the Fibonacci man? <laughs> Interesting. We were no relation, but that's that's my name. That's my. Um, I'm from Calabria. He was from Tuscany. So, but Bonacci is a big name in in Italy. Um, his real name was Leonardo Bonacci. Fi means son of. Fibonacci means son of Leonardo Bonacci, who was also famous as well. 
Right, great. Um, this is very interesting how all of these family bloodlines, they tie in together and how everything, of course, is centralized and controlled by the same uh, people. But would you say that this power system that we live in at the moment and that I guess we've lived in for eons, really, how was it created, really? Was it orchestrated by extraterrestrial alien races that can live for centuries and that can feed off of human energy and emotions, who created this constant evolving progress, life and civilizations evolving, and then a great reset, and then another cycle will start with the creation of new evolving and developing civilizations. Is this a sophisticated computer game where we all play a different role, a holographic illusion? All of what you said is all how it is. It is exactly like that. It is a big computer. Um, it's not artificial though. It's, um, it can, to a degree, it is artificial because it's, it's just a, it's just a um, uh, the 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 minimal that it can be. It's it's the downgraded. It's the most downgraded artificial system that exists. Really, um, anything that appears in the physical world is artificial because it's made of electrical transverse waves, and the the uh, source wave of the universe is the ether or the longitudinal wave. Um, unfortunately, the ether has been, um, has been gotten rid of by Einstein and the Jesuits. They deliberately um, uh, ignore or, or, or shun that there is a fifth element. They, they speak of plasma, gas, liquid and solid, but so they acknowledge the plasma world, but they deny the ether world. And the ether world, without the ether, nothing can be explained. Um, the cosmos we live in cannot be explained. And the atom cannot be explained. And nothing can be explained. And so that's why it was so important to destroy the ether or at least the public awareness about the existence of ether where you can tap in to free energy which is what nikola tesla talked about huh yeah think about it they tell you in subtle ways when you connect your computer to the ethernet through an ethernet cable you actually are getting instantaneous information the only reason there's a one second delay, when I Google a, an image of the Vatican, for instance, and I, hit, and I hit send, instantly, there's hundreds and hundreds of photos. Now, you may say, oh no, it's not instant. It takes, you know, one and a half, one point something seconds or whatever, depending on how fast you speak. It is instant. Why? because they are using the ether. They're, everyone's using the ether. We swim in the ether. The ether is everything, the ether is everywhere. Ether deniers are, are godless people. When I say godless, it means a godless individual is one who actually denies their own divinity. Because if you say there is no God, that shows your utmost intelligence because God is, has always been and always will be um, intelligent, conscious energy, which the universe is abundant in. So how can you deny that energy exists? And how can you deny that consciousness exists? Well, that's what you're doing when you deny God. But, and that's part of scientism and that agenda as well, which is linked to the entire global global agenda. We'll get to the whole flat earth, right? <laughs> and how we use words. But um, 
But you, um, you actually uh, also talk about Nikola Tesla, and of course we know the famous quote that he said that if you want to know the secret to the universe, you have to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So this is, of course, uh, also a, a really amazing topic. And I know that you've been really studying this and talking about this for a long time because everything is vibration. Also, when you, know, when you are close to somebody, you sit across from somebody, if we were, we could feel each other's energy even more, well, more, more intensely. But I think you can also tap into somebody's energy when you're not with them or if you are on an uh, internet connection like this. It's almost like time and space doesn't exist, right? So please, if you can talk for a moment about time and space, how would you define it? Oh, beautiful. Well, time and space occur with what you said before, the vibration world. Because there are two energies. There is a radiation wave and a vibration wave. Radiation is far, far more powerful than vibration. Radiation magnetism, white light, is 10 billion times minimum more powerful than the force of electricity. Electricity in theology is the son of God, the word made flesh. It is sonoluminescence. It vibrates. It's a transverse wave. And then you have the longitudinal magnetic wave. And that's where you get the cross. The cross. And that, that man, that's you because your body takes that shape when you are baptized in earth, when you are born and incarnated, that's the cross that you must bear. So your womb, you come from a womb and you end up in a tomb and that tomb is your anatomy, atoms. The T is essentially, it's the letter denoting the atomic universe that we live in. All is atom. So when you say you're in a, when you said before you're in a crowd of uh, a room with a crowd of people and you get a vibration from the people, well, the vibration comes from their minds and their livers. They are creating thought waves and emotion waves, and the room is thick with these waves but they are also creating another wave. It's called the radiation wave, which pulsates from your heart. And you can feel that when people lose their egos. If you're in a room with people that are just making vibration waves, that's going to be very, very dense. But when people are in a room and they connect heart to heart, now they are creating a, rate, a standing wave between there's no radiation uh, vibration waves separate you because they're solid so you think the other guy next to you is someone else well it is but on a higher level it's not we're all the same being on a higher level so but the vibratory world and your limited senses fix you into a belief system of what, um, you know, what is tangible is real and what is not tangible is not real. So I think now is the time when people like you and, and your listeners are starting to understand this and, and they're starting to see more reality in the non-tangible world. Hence, they go on a spiritual path. They become a philosopher or they do yoga, they start meditating, they change their diet, they do a lot of research. These are people who are not buying into the, um, you know, the, um, the party line or the, nar the narrated script that the elites want us to believe. They want us to believe that we are barbaric, um, murderous and... Um, non-trustworthy humans, you know, 
that we will kill each other to survive and, and that we love war. We need war. It um, brings fresh blood into the world and it gets the economy going and all of these lies. So these are only recent lies from a very, very decadent, decadent education system. And right now we have to fear each other, right? Being close to each other because then we can get, well, contaminate it by each other, right? Because of the, the so-called virus. Exactly. See, so the same tactics that they used in the Inquisition, because the same people are now doing COVID, um, are being implemented. For instance, social distancing, wear a mask, Call if you see some suspicious activity. If your neighbour seems to have parties where unmasked people uh, are going in and out of his front door, you tell the police and then the police will come and knock and some of those people disappear. You know, some get arrested on the spot and some actually disappear forever. Really? Be well, because of snitching by stupid people? By stupid people. They are called useless eaters and the people who um, are policing them are called useful idiots, policemen, nurses, uh, doctors. Oh, don't worry. This vaccination will protect you and it's totally safe. The person who just dropped dead five minutes ago who received, he was going to die anyway. So don't worry, you can trust us. These are useful idiots. Useless eaters are the ones that they are going to um, have eliminated first by the useful idiots. So can, can the, the so-called coronation of the population, which, which happens through this corona crisis and the jabs that people get injected with, only happen because people are under severe collective mind control, ultimately, well, afraid of death, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, a scripture says, Satan has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. What that means is this satanic system is blinding people through education. Um, like your Pavlov's dog, you, um, once you keep indoctrinating people with a lie, no matter how big the lie is, it doesn't matter. The bigger, the better, the harder they fall for it. Like the glug, for instance. And, um, and the fact that, uh, Europeans colonized the Americas and built all, the, all those cathedrals with a horse and cart and all of those monumental skyscrapers in New York and San Francisco and it's a total lie. It's, it's totally a fabrication. Was that a lie? Who built it? Who built all, all of that then? That we did, you know, in a, in a, in a different age, in an age where we protected our civilization, our culture, our traditions, um, Islam protected theirs, Christianity protected theirs, um, the Hindus, but it was all the same. They, taught, they understood that each other's religion was just another expression of their own. They didn't, they didn't feel how they do now, where an Islamist must hate a Christian and must try to convert him, otherwise he's not a true Islamist. It was not like that. No, in, in that's Tartaria. a political that, narrative, obviously, huh? A control narrative. Yes. Politics and religion are very, very handy um, uh, weapons against humanity, and they have been rep weaponized. Um, politics really should be simple, uh, simplified right down to a bare minimum of having administrators um, who work maybe two months of the year and rest 10 months of the year where they do, where you do what's called public service. And so, in fact, that's what a policeman should be, a public servant. Um, a politician is a public servant. Um, all of these people, they are just public servants. So 
the real sovereign uh, organic form of government is that um, service, service to public. But what we see is somehow people have managed to um, work out the formula of getting power with wealth through politics, through religion, organizing people against each other, dividing communities. The Hegelian dialectic, huh? Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. That's the modus operandi of Rome. And Rome is the fourth captivity. According to the Jews, there was first Egypt, then Persia, then Babylon, then Rome. And they say in their esoteric teachings that when the fourth captivity is over, then we will be free. So basically what we're witnessing is the fall, the true fall of Rome because people are starting to see that there must be a central directing governing body for all of these um, lockdowns and all of these uniform type um, implementations that governments have implemented all over the earth. So people are starting to see that something, something smells fishy with politics, but eventually, here's the key. They must understand that behind every politician is a priest. Behind every admiralty, maritime, contract, uh, trust law, mercantile law, commercial law, banking law, all of these laws underpinning all of them is what's called ecclesiastical law. Once people understand this, then we will uh, remove the priests who are behind. You see, people like Benjamin Netanyahu, he gets his orders from the Jewish Sanhedrin. That is the Jewish cabal. I reckon they're about as evil as the Jesuits and the Freemasons. Well, it's all connected and, and they are all connected, right? All of them. And also the puppets that we call the leaders that are uh, heads of states uh, at the moment in, in, in whatever country. I mean, they also get their, their um, orders from, from elsewhere, so to speak, which is what people refer to sometimes as the deep state huh? and, and other factions of that above that, secret societies. But I mean, th this is a long-term plan, and we talked about it uh, just before. I mean, this is, has been this has been going on for civilizations, really. So, is this a repeating, uh, constant thing where where humanity evolve, new civilizations spring up, so to speak, or or are being created, and then another great reset happens? Is this an ET plan in a way? It is. It's. It's transdimensional. That's how I would say it for the listeners who are still not so well versed in the reptilian, the draconians, and the, all these um, wars between the Martians and the Atlanteans. And there's all different versions of who's warring against who. But the scriptures are the best in explaining how it works. Every country has a prince, which is a, like an archangel. And some of those princes are corrupt. So in um, the book of Daniel, it speaks about how the prince of Persia came up against the prince of Greece to war against Greece. And these are demons or archons or egregores. Some of them are good. They're not all bad. You know, not all the elite people, then the, the children, they're not all bad. Some of them are benefactors. They love humanity. It's... It's just that the evil ones have got all the systems in place. It's their system. They made a system. Once that system, once we ignore that system, then it won't exist. How can this be allowed to happen? I've asked many people on the show about this. The creational force, source, God, you name it, the creator, uh, why would 
it, he, whatever, whoever, allow this to happen. It's almost like we are quarantined on this planet within the matrix, on this slave prison planet, where this constant repetition keep going, like also the karma cycle, karmic cycle, and white light reincarnational cycle, and, and those things as well. Why, I mean, why all of the terror, the hatred, the fear, which is of course what controls the entire planet, why, 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 are, why is it allowed to happen if there is, there's this all loving God? Yeah, yeah. First of all, we need to understand that there's the monad, which is the source God, and then there's the dyad, then the triad, then the tetrad God. And that's Jehovah, the lowest one. These lower ones, they are the creators. For instance, a carpenter, he builds a house, he creates a house, but he doesn't create the bricks, he doesn't create the wood, he, he gets that, he buys that, but he is the maker of the house. So the maker of the wood, that's us, that's who we are, but we also participated in the maker of this construct because we're all dreaming this together. So the idea is that individual components of this one descending, expanding God, as it individualizes, certain individuals awaken before the others, and they are called prophets, diviners, priests, leaders, gurus, whatever you want to call them. So you'll see that there are leaders everywhere and good ones. There's a lot of good spiritual teachers out there who are teaching, you know, how to meditate properly and how to ascend. And but there are also many, many new age type leaders and gurus who is hijacking the whole, let's just say, consciousness m movement and have done that for years and years. You know, those people who take charge in a group or in a, a cult. I could share my opinions. And that probably valuable, but I'm going to go directly to the source, the Hermetica. The Hermetica says that <clears throat> we came here into this world through one of two options. We were forced here as a kind of a, not a punishment, it's figuratively, it's, it is a punishment, but um, we were forced here to learn certain things and improve certain aspects of our souls. The other way, we came voluntarily, we volunteered. So you and I, we may be volunteers. We may be, we, we may be just uh, have volunteered to come here to do things like these shows to, you know, save 10 or 20 people. You know, I mean, I hope that my millions of um, uh, hits that I've had on my videos, well, I don't hope, I know I have saved or helped many, many people in every area of their lives. So I don't know which option is my case. Um, for me, it feels like a punishment because the world is a beautiful place, but the system is so awful that I am dysfunctional in this system. It's almost like you can't comprehend that we're actually on this timeline at this point and that we are watching this while we are living and th through this and going through all of this. I mean, of course, there's a purpose with what we do and lots of people that we know, but it's almost uh, incredible to, to, to comprehend that we are in the middle of this madness at the moment. It is incredible, but it's beautiful at the same time because you are immortal. Everyone, we're all immortal. We all have goodness. Okay, yes, you and I, we've done a lot of bad shit. We've all done bad stuff. Stuff that we regret and praise and hope that the universe will be lenient on us for 
the, some of the things that we've done, but we've all done good and we all have good in us. Good is God. Good is the second principle. First is truth. From truth is born goodness and from goodness is born love. And so we are all good. We all have love. We all have virtues and gifts. So, so long as we are building those every day, building upon our, our goodness and the most important thing of all is two things, devotion and service. Are we devoted to this cause? How much time do we put into this? Are we devoted to the gods? Do we follow astrology? Who are the gods? Jupiter, Saturn. Do we see what, what they are orchestrating in our lives as they, they um, choreograph our movements and everything? Part of it is destined. Part of it is fate. Part of it we can modify. Part of it we have free will. It's a whole mixture of these things. We don't have complete free will because I can't come, I can't come over to your place and punch you in the nose because I don't like you. I don't have that fr that's misusing free will. But some people actually do that to each other. They actually, actually step over that private sphere of people beating on each other and hitting people and doing all kinds of physical things, which is outrageous, really. You're not allowed to do that. That's right. Do no harm is the universal law. Thou shalt not kill, you shall not do harm. So the moment you do harm, you're actually harming yourself. Personally, I'm a very sensitive individual. I have a Pisces moon and Piscean moon people are very, very sensitive. So every time I get angry, which is a lot, <laughs> I, I lose weight. I wish that would happen to me. <laughs> well, could use it now. Lockdown has not been kind to everyone. <laughs> well, give me the recipe. I lose I'd weight. like it. The only reason I'm so skinny is because I'm angry. That's it. Oh, wow. So what is your star sign then? Aries. It's Aries. Oh, yeah. yeah. Going forward, huh? with a Leo rising and the Leo rising is very, very evident in my, <laughs> in my constitution. You can see, you can see the lion. <laughs> so that's why you are a powerful personality. So thank God you have a bit of Pisces there as well to calm everything down maybe a little bit. Exactly. Yes. And you are right. I am a very, very powerful person as, as we all are, but, what I need to learn is how to not misuse that power. So I have a lot to learn. Uh, when it comes to wisdom, I'm, um, I'm very, very lacking in, uh, in my opinion. Uh, at my age, I should, I should be a lot wiser, but uh, knowledge, Truth, those things there, because of the, prof the profound amount of research that I've done, um, I'm able to be um, well-versed in those areas. I'm just daily praying, praying for more wisdom. <laughs> so are you still religious? I mean, you've created, you are the founder of something called Syncretism Society. And I guess that includes all of you, all of the different religions and beliefs and, and, and myths, mythology and, and all, the, all of the holy scriptures combined. I mean, it can allow uh, all of that to, to be, be put together. But maybe you can actually tell us a little bit. You, you'll explain it better. What is syncretism? Syncretism is everyone's philosophy slash religion slash uh, devotion. Everybody's a syncretist. They just don't know it. What that means is that everyone is able to see parallel lines of truth 
within every field of human knowledge. For instance, if you, if you do comparative religion, which I've done for decades, you will find that the same stories in the Gospel of John and Matthew, you'll find those very, very same stories just said differently in Bhagavad Gita. And then you go to the Zendavesta and you go to um, uh, the Nordic uh, teachings, you'll find that the same story is told over and over again. It's only the honest truth seekers who will admit that there is only one philosophy, and that's what syncretism is. And there are different names for different gods and different uh, uh, figures in mythology and these religious scriptures like like Hermes, Hermes, he's, he's also the Egyptian god Thoth, right? Yes. And, and, and Ra is another one. And, and, all, and I know you've talked a lot about this. It will also be really interesting if we can go a little bit into that field as well, because people need to know that there are many names for the same character or, or different god. There are. And um, all of them, all of the names of all the gods, they all go back to the sun. Everything, all words, all life, all waves emanate from the sun. So even though, and I learned this from one of the Neoplatonists, Macrobius, he wrote, I forget the name of the book now, but he wrote a book and in that book, he outlines all the names, Osiris, Buddha, Zeus, Hermes, Hercules, Achilles. He said, they all go back to the sun, the savior, because the sun rising every day is what saves us. It brings us food, it brings us light. Light is another way of saying life. It brings us nourishment and minerals, vitamin D, all the array of minerals. In fact, they don't tell you this, but all the minerals that exist are in the air. It's not just nitrogen and oxygen and argon. It's all of them in very, very small, small, small bits. Um, you know, like um, subatomic or... or um, you know, very, very, very fractal, but uh, the sun is what produces those salts. Uh, salts are what we are made of. Magnesium is a salt. Sodium is a salt. Chloride is a salt. So we are a pillar of salt. And so all of those salts come from the sun and the seawater. And so this is why salt is very, very important. It's um, one of the um, greatest medicines that has ever been used in history and which now in the new age, salt is bad for you. Well, that's true partially if you're going to be using table salts, which is nothing but glass crystals. Because they cook the salt, they don't sun dry it, they cook it, the crystal actually forms very, very sharp edges and now you are ingesting this, it's tearing all the veins and arteries, it's, it's ripping them, it's shredding them and then the cholesterol comes to repair that and now you go to the doctor because you're not feeling well and he says, oh, you need some cholesterol tablets and you'll be taking them for the rest of your life. Thank you very much. Yeah, dreadful, isn't it? I mean, people should never take anything for that. That's right. So in the uh, Syncretism Academy, which we are launching very, very soon, we will be teaching people about these essential, basic, natural remedies. Everything will be natural. Everything will be corrected. For instance, one example, if you have a bad model, 
you will have bad methods. So a bad model is allopathy, invented by the Jesuit Catholic Rothschilds and Rockefellers in the early 1900s. And who were their enemies? Well, the naturopaths and the homeopaths. Why? Well, because they were using herbs that cannot be patented, chemically altered, patented, and make a lot of snake oil money from selling these pharmaceutical demonic drugs. Which is why they can pull off this whole scam right now, right? With exactly, the, the germ theory. Theory. Mm -hmm. So with our academy, we're going to remove the bad models, introduce the good models like naturopathy and homeopathy, and then we're going to be giving people protocols based on natural herbs, essential oils, spagyrics, tissue salts, um, ormus, uh, MMS, colloidal silvers, coppers and golds. We're going to be going back to nature. So we'll have correct model, correct method. That sounds really amazing. Absolutely wonderful. I'd love to hear more about that as you progress and we can have you on the show again about this because it's very, very important. I was going to ask you about MMS as well, but you just mentioned that. But you were yep. talking before about sound and I know that you've been lecturing on, on this as well. This is so important yep. because sound is a vibration. Sound is everywhere. Vibrating energy is everything and everywhere all vibrations can heal or create disharmony or dis-ease. But sound can also heal, sound healing. Is sound healing the ultimate key to repair and heal the body? Do you or does one have to trust or believe in the power of sound healing in order to make it work and function properly? Or can it work or will it work anyway, whether you put your trust into it or not? Um, good question. Sound is, sound is um, the original radiation wave magnetism. So sound and light is all that exists. And that brings us a word called sonoluminescence. So you can go to YouTube and you can see videos on sonoluminescence. Basically, it's plasma. But plasma comes from ether, which the world believes does not exist. So they believe in plasma, but you can create plasma quite easily just by heating gases. So sonoluminescence, sound, when the scripture says, and the word was made flesh, the word is the logos. Logos means sound. Flesh is everything that is material. This phone here, this is, this is flesh. My body is flesh. The house I'm living in is flesh. It's made by sound. The word made flesh. So that's why I'm with, I'm going to give a, a really, really worthy company a plug here, LifeWave. I'm with LifeWave. And, and that's the stick or, or the plaster or what, whatever you put on your, your body that, that, can, that can be part of healing the body. Is, is that LifeWave? That's LifeWave, brother. Um, that you stick on. Yeah, I tried that once. It's amazing. It really, really, really works. I've been, to, I've been on it for about, um, on and off for about two years, but now I'm actually a distributor and I'm inviting people to, um, to join my line and get in on it because part of the academy as well is wealth creation. We're going to be teaching people how to generate wealth. Why do, why do you need a nine to five? Why do you need to go and do a job when you can heal people and make money? And you also know how to use them correctly, right? Because I tried it once and I got a little bit 
nauseating. Well, I, 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 I got well a bit dizzy and wanted to throw up. I guess I had it on too long or something. I don't know. Yeah, that was probably glutathione. Glutathione, I'm going to put one on right now for you. Glutathione, in clinical tests, the moment you put this patch on, your glutathione goes up 300%. Now, this is where I'll put mine. Oh. Right there on that nadi. So I've got glutathione here. And now what I'm going to do... On the leg there. Yep. Is I'm going to put one on the back of my spine. And this is called... Uh, X39, this generates stem cells in your body. This is how I get energy. This is one of the things, the protocols that I have, that I get energy to be able to do the work that I'm doing, to be able to get on shows like this and have, and have energy. Otherwise, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I'd be as, um, as healthy as I am. Yeah, but what about sound healing? You also talk about that. That's also something that is recreational, right? And that can r repair damage in, in the body or if you're sick or Ill, or Ill or something, huh? Yep, yep. There's another one. So these, these, these are sound and light. What they're doing is they're sending pulses of sound and light. Now, I know that the people who uh, invented this, they generally only say that it's a light pulse. But I'm here to say that it is a sound and light pulse. It can, they, they're not, you can't separate sound from light. You cannot do that. It's impossible. It, they are one and the same thing. Just, just on different octaves. So when, so when you heal the body through the power of your voice, for example, or a certain sound that sound that you create in a in a different way, you, you can talk about this. Then it can actually heal something in the body, huh? Is that is that something people have to believe in in order to see the success of, or or can it can it heal no matter what? whether you believe it or not. I mean, because, because the power of the mind, you know, is actually what really works on everything, huh? True. It's the power of the mind. Someone who has no belief at all probably won't, won't even uh, accept one of these treatments. That's how, far they, that's how far they've gone. But people who have little belief will receive a uh, little benefit according to their belief. Belief is not... Uh, you know, blind faith. That's not we're talking. That's not we're talking. What we're talking about. Um, if you um, get in a car uh, to go from A to B, you believe, you know, and believe that you're able to do that. It's that kind of belief. You believe in yourself. So, if the more the belief you have, the more you enable your body to heal. I mean, it's just common sense because your that's the power we have it's some people call this uh placebo effect in fact some people have been given placebos and they'll go off and they go oh i feel so much better and the doctor will sit there and go well <laughs> We didn't do anything, you know, so... Well, just going to the doctor makes some people feel better, huh? Yeah, that's true. That's true. See, this is the power that people have. And they turn it around and then they make something neg negative of it, saying that it's, oh, it's only about your belief, if you believe in it. Well, it is. But that's the thing. You have to know that you have this power. It's called belief. And... and and people are only hurting themselves when they diminish and belittle um, things that 
that they don't understand that can help and, th and their own abilities really because you have you have the possibility to heal yourself by the power of your mind and your thought really and uh, and other people can assist in that if you're very good at being a sound healer and using frequencies and you've been talking about these frequencies as well and connecting them with colors also and and numbers and I think it's interesting to go into the the words that you know a lot about and myth Mythology, because very soon the world will be hijacked by the so-called Delta variant of the coronavirus. And you've talked about Alpha, which is the moon, right? And Omega is Saturn. And then we have Delta. And there's a lot of Delta happening here. Delta waves, which is connected to sleep and amnesia. And uh, well, what's the whole meaning about this? I mean, what, what's the symbolism behind using these words and how, how is it all connected? Frequencies, I mean. The frequencies that they use have been modified to harm us. It's a well-known fact that you can put packets of information within waves. So down the road here, there's a tower, there's a 4G tower. Now that is always pulsating uh, waves. Now, if the government, the local government here wanted the people of this town to be sick and to get symptoms of COVID, all they have to do is put the little COVID, this is my uh, expression, a little COVID packet of information inside every wave. I forget what it's called, but it, it, it's called something to do with loading the wave with extra information. Um, that's how they do subliminal um, messaging. Like phased arrays. Yeah, they stick it inside an innocent carrier. So 4G may be maybe not as harmful as we think even 5g 5g does not have to be harmful it can be it can be really really good for you how, how can it be good for you well because it's it's just waves we're, we're made up of waves if if those waves it's about how, how how much voltage how much energy goes into those waves yeah certainly if they turn it up to 60 gigahertz that's right. And then that'll affect the water mo molecule. Then you'll have respiratory um, problems, etc. All the, all the COVID symptoms, they come from those 5G waves. This, they are symbiotic. They can't have COVID without 5G. So, but 5G is a technology that can be very, very good. <laughs> it's all of them are. All the technologies can be really, really, really good. But, but how can it be good to be bombarded with all of these electromagnetic frequencies from all sides, even if they, now that they've turned on 5G all over the world, basically, we still have 4G, 3G, 2G, and so on, and smart meter, smart technology, Internet of Things, Wi-Fi, and all of those things that we're being bombarded with. This is a massive soup. Uh, that will interfere with our vibration, our human vibration, the soul frequency, the consciousness frequency, uh, obviously. I mean, this is uh, also what they say will connect us eventually to AI, the super brain computer and Neuralink and all of that, and even the so-called um, super brain beyond, uh, which is not made by humans. So um, this, the whole sound system, we talked about the, we, now they're, they're um, uh, introducing the Delta um, variant. And there's actually, actually a company called the Delta Electronics, which is a 5G company. How interesting, huh? And then there was the project, the mind control project called MK Delta, which they have actually taken away from Wikipedia. But if you look into it, you know, you know that this was an interrogation thing and drugs were used and substances which could actually be linked to the kind of poison that people take at the moment. This was a lot to hit you with at, at, <laughs> at once, but uh, just to get back to your knowledge about uh, how all of this is used, alpha, omega, delta, all of these things, it's all in mythology, huh? Absolutely it is, brother.
but rest assured that you and I, as we implement protective measures, um, good eating, eating whole foods, nothing out of plastic bags and you know processed stuff, as long as we keep that immune system strong, we can resist those waves. You've got to, you've got to think, it, there's not just radio waves out there. If you put all the radio waves and all the other kind of waves that are being produced artificially, you put them all together, there's still not even a billionth of all the other cosmic rays that are coming through our body at every minute of our lives. So I really feel that it's people who, um, who have bad health, uh, poor mental um, habits, uh, toxic emotion, lots of anger, lots of bitterness against, oh, I don't know, some family member who did them some wrong 20 years ago. I think people who are in that, who haven't released all of this, who haven't done emotional releasing, who haven't done meditating, who, who aren't done, not on a good diet, who are not exercising every day, every day. You must go for a walk barefoot. No shoes, no shoes, every day for an hour. One hour every day. Without shoes for an hour? Absolutely. No shoes. You should be careful where you tread, huh? I don't. I walk on anything. I walk on glass. I walk on, on my feet. Are, that's, my feet are my shoes. Wow. Yeah. It, take, it takes a bit of hardening in that way, huh? Well, I, I only live um, uh, two blocks from the beach. So every morning we go to the, we do what we call sun worship. We go with minimal clothing. We do uh, yoga, walking and swimming. We do three things every single morning. Every Sunday, we do a sweat lodge called Temascal. Here in um, Mexico, they had the traditional Temascal. So the community comes, we all come together, we all go into the Temascal and we all get um, we, the skin. You can scrape your skin and you can actually feel gunk coming from dead skin, from, from toxins. So we do that every week religiously and every day on the beach. And that's, those are two things that are already going. Now, the, the teaching and the Tesla coil healing and the sound healing therapies, they are coming as the machines. They'll be here within the next few weeks. So definitely by the end of July, things will be really, really rolling here. We'll have a, a proper, proper, proper academy with everything. So are things better in Mexico? It seems that a lot of friends of mine and maybe of yours also in the truth movement, they're moving to Mexico if they can. And uh, I mean, we hear that things are a little bit better from some sources, but can you confirm that or not? So Mexico is definitely the best place to be. Um, where I am in Quintana Roo, just south of Cancun, in a small town called Puerto Morelos, uh, there are forests, there's jungle everywhere. I've got a four-wheel drive. I did, when I first came to Mexico 18 months ago, I got myself a small four-wheel drive because I thought things don't, things could, could get bad here as well. I'm going to go straight up to the mountains where there's papaya, bananas, coconuts, have a machete, live in my car and just wait it out. <laughs> that was that was my plan. But regardless of that, things, um, things are really, really good here. You can walk into most shops without a mask and no one's telling you to take it, to put it on or anything. So, 
So you decided, right, to go to Mexico and live there for a while, or maybe permanently you moved from Australia, which is your home country, huh? Well, I went to California first. I went there for a reason and um, to meet some people, etc., and start some presentations. I did some all around Oregon and California, Portland, San Francisco, Sacramento, Los Angeles. And then I had to do a visa run. But the first visa run I did, I went to Costa Rica and Nicaragua. And then I went back to the States, did my three months, and I, and I was invited to do a presentation in Mexico. So I came to Mexico City, did a presentation, and then people were telling me that there's a lot of healers in Oaxaca. So I got on a plane, went to Oaxaca. Within a week, the lockdowns began. That was in March last year. So I was locked down in one of the most beautiful, paradisical places in the world. Oh, good for you, huh? You were lucky then. Oh, it was the best time of my life. Wow. <laughs> so you actually did this before you knew about the whole Corona thing. Yes. Yes. I was lucky to be stuck in Mexico. Now I'm a um, permanent resident. So I'm stuck. I'm, I'm Mexican. I'm staying here. Really? You got citizenship or what? Not citizenship, permanent resident. Permanent resident. Wow, amazing. And and you're from Sydney or where in Australia? Melbourne. Melbourne. Okay. Right. And this is of course we've heard the most horrendous stories about what happened in Victoria and, and all of these places. I mean, it seems to be the same thing happening all over. But just to get back to what you all you're also a musician. And what is also important when we talk about sound and vibration is, of course, the megahertz. Can you tell people a little bit about that? Because this is also something that is hijacking the entire uh, world of entertainment and showbiz. Yes, so um, 432 is what I use. 528 is also a good uh, system, but 432 goes back to the Neoplatonists, and I'm a Neoplatonist, which means follower of the school of Plato's and Plato and Pythagoras. It was um, astrology, plant-based diet, and devotion to the gods, which is devotion to astrology. Astrology is the mother of all sciences. So it's very, very important that everyone becomes a competent astrologer. It's the only way to understand the electromagnetic universe. Astrology is nothing but a system, the best system of understanding electromagnetic waves and how they affect you over the course of your life. As the planets move and turn in the sky, they orchestrate different events in your life. They orchestrate changes, shifts, progressions, evolution, optimizations in your life. And the zodiac can only exist, the, the, the star constellations can only exist within the matrix, huh? Because outside it's not, well, astrology well doesn't exist because it's physical in a way, huh? It is very, very true. But there is a transcendental version of astrology, it, but it works on scale waves it's it's not the transverse way the astrology that we are doing here on earth it's all based on the electromagnetic wave whereas the dielectric magnetic wave that is the ether that's different and it has a transcendental uh, astrological system which is exactly the same but it just works on a um, I guess, um, a higher, more spiritual um, way because you won't have physicality. So it, it won't have to do with, you know, when I do medical astrology, for instance, I can tell if you've got a sick liver. I can tell if you need to boost your yin or your yang kidney. 
I can tell you if your eyesight is poor. I can tell you all of that on the astrological chart, which is based on transverse waves. But in the transcendental astrology, which is etheric and not plasma, so there's only two things going on, ether and plasma, ether and plasma. Radial waves, vibration waves. Radiation, vibration. So people should use uh, 432 megahertz and not 440, huh? Definitely not 440. 440 is when you do, when you check out cymatic um, videos, for instance, on, um, on frequencies, you will see that when 430, 440 is used, you'll see that there, there are a lot of little um, distorted and warped parts of the whole and when, when they turn it down just that little bit to 432 you see all the harmonics connect up and you have the whole array of harmonics so 440 is about depriving you of all the harmonics which fill that sound out it's like um you know having um uh, fries without ketchup, right? You, you, don't, you don't get the whole experience. 432 gives you the full impact and power of the music. And do you also think that the rings of Saturn are beaming a certain frequency, which is also something you can hear that's actually quite ominous. They recorded the sound or translated the sound waves. Are some, some uh, researchers into the, the, these uh, esoteric topics say that the rings of Saturn are actually um, putting Earth under some kind of frequency control? I think so. You know, I think um, when they do these uh, out of space explorations, which you can't because we're in a closed system, um, when they do this, they're actually going there and um, messing with the rings of Saturn. Perhaps they'll throw in aluminium or they'll throw in, um, you know, uh, lead or something, or they'll, they'll throw some uh, element in there to change the frequency of those rings because those rings should actually be healing. But I think the Archons have been messing with those rings as they do with the moon. They mess with the moon and they, 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 what they're doing is with HARP is they're ionizing the planets. The planets are only local. They're only like about 60 or 70 miles above our heads. Same with the sun. It's only like about 70 or 80 miles above. Well, all of that we have to, you know, th this is one of the major topics that I wanted to get into with you, of course, uh, w when we have you on the show. It takes a lot of thorough explanation and, uh, and uh, some questions to what is actually real or not about the flat earth theory. I don't think we'll be able to go into that today, but I would love to have a part two with you where we can actually also focus on this because this is one of the most controversial topics with and has divided a lot of people within the truth movement and I think it's important to put um, a, a constructive light on whether or not this can actually be so I know you've been talking about it for a while so it would be good to have time enough to to go into this topic I know the viewers will be really interested well let's let's set, set one up for next week and um, you've come to the right person I will give you more more than enough proof, not evidence, proof that the earth is in fact stationary and it is a horizontal plane. I wish I could already go into all the questions about that, but, but I know it will be a fascinating and explosive hour with you when we, when we go into part two. And there are also many other topics I think we should, 
we should talk about. But I think for today, it's been absolutely wonderful. And I think it's been such a great start. And we touched upon different and great topics. And it's just been so great to finally have you on the show, Santos Bonacci. It's wonderful. How can people find you when they look on the internet? Universaltruthschool.com Mr. Astro Theology, my YouTube channel. Syncretism Society on Instagram and on YouTube. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us. I look forward to another great talk with you, Santos, next week. Thank you so much for being on Age of Truth TV. Thank you, Lucas. I, I uh, consider it a great Great honor and privilege to be on your show, brother. I love you. I love your work. And you're really doing some great, great stuff, man. I'm 100% behind you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Thank you, Santos. It's great to, to see you there and have a wonderful day in Mexico. You too, brother. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much to Santos Bonacci and thanks to all of you for watching Age of Truth TV. We are looking so much forward to part two of our interview with Santos Bonacci very, very soon on the channel. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. You can sign up for our newsletter on our website, ageoftruth.tv as well. Please also subscribe to our alternative channels on BitChute and Brighton. Your support is very, very appreciated. On behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you again very soon.